Good day. Uh, my name is Jim Davis. I'm the Africa Partnerships Coordinator here at Kairos, Canadian Ecumenical Justice Initiatives. And we're uh, very pleased to have with us uh, Verni Yokogandiano. Uh, she is with the Inagbuyong. Uh, Inagbuyong. Um, a group affiliated with the indigenous group affiliated with the Cordelia Pe People's Alliance uh, in northern Philippines. And also joining us. Uh, my name is Connie Sorio and I coordinate the partnerships program in the Asia Pacific. And in Abuyo, with Verne with us today, um, um, Nabuyog is a partner of the yeah, of Kairos in Asia. Um, hi Verne. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> So I'm Bernie Yohogandiano. Um, I am with Inabuyo, that's an alliance of indigenous women's organizations in the Cordillera, and it's affiliated with the Cordillera People's Alliance, which is very much involved in the uh, defense of land, life, and resources of the indigenous peoples in the Cordillera, fighting for self-determination. Mm -hmm. um, in, in your view, uh, Bernie, um, what are some of the most uh, pressing questions um, that indigenous communities are dealing with around resource extraction? Okay, yeah, that's a very important question. So uh, right now, the indigenous, uh, the, the Cordillera uh, region, which is largely in, uh, inhabited by indigenous peoples in the Philippines, uh, are the attention of the Philippine government in terms of uh, uh, extracting the natural resources, particularly on its mineral resources. So the Cordillera region is very rich in um, natural resources, particularly uh, mineral resources. And at the moment, around 66% uh, of the indigenous uh, the Cordillera ancestral uh, domain have been applied by um, um, mining transnational corporations, including five uh, Canadian uh, mining corporations. So that, uh, that has, uh, uh, the Philippine government has really become very aggressive in terms of uh, uh, offering these uh, natural resources to uh, foreign corporations, especially after the enactment of the Philippine Mining Act of 1995. Mm -hmm. So this law has actually given all the rights, uh, including um, water rights, timber rights, eviction rights, uh, repatriation of capital to the countries of uh, the mining companies coming to, uh, to operate in the Cordillera region and giving no rights at all to the indigenous peoples. So this has really, uh, this has really become a very um, serious issue, serious issue among indigenous peoples and particularly to women who are very much dependent to uh, um, the land and natural resources. Verna, you touched on the Canadian connection. Can you elaborate on that? Can you say a bit more? Yeah. So uh, I've mentioned a while ago that there are five uh, Canadian uh, mining companies which uh, have applications in the Cordillera region. This includes the Ivanhoe Mines, the Tierra Nova, the Solfotara, the Olympus, uh, Olympus Pacific Mining, and Golden, uh, the Golden Valley Resources. Well, actually, the um, yeah, Ivanhoe the Ivanhoe, Tierra Nova, Olympus Pacific Mining have like started with their um, with their um, uh, yeah the exploration with, uh, with with their exploration and happy to uh, inform um, Kairos and of course the Canadian public that uh, these uh, these operations have been opposed this exploration activities of this mining can uh, this uh, Canadian mining company have been opposed locally and it's very important that the Canadian um, uh, public and uh, well uh, indigenous uh, peoples all over the world who are also having the same uh, struggles know that this has been opposed and continue to be opposed uh, at the local level and this information is also brought to a wider um, not just uh, among coordinator affected communities but even other communities affected by money in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if we can also touch on, you know, um, the, the complicity, or if I may say, um, this company's operation in the region aggravating the human rights situation in, in the Cordilleras. Yeah, 
it's very much uh, the the struggle against the operation of these many companies is very much um, connected to the human rights of indigenous peoples and of women in the uh, in the Cordillera and of course in the Philippines where Canadian mining companies are also operating. Um, well, if, if it had been the history in the in the of indigenous peoples in the Cordillera that where there are development aggression projects, where there is resource extraction by the state and by corporations, there is also uh, militarization. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it's very obvious now that uh, the state of militarization in the Cordillera re region is found in areas where there are actually mining applications. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, when militarization happens, there is, of course, the violation of human rights uh, of, of the communities, and, and so um, there is this deployment of a, a big number of uh, government soldiers mm. and uh, the, yes and there's um, uh, like um, direct attack to the communities the leaders of organizations opposing mining activities and other development aggression are uh, being um, become the targets mm -hmm. and they uh, they really suffer various forms of human rights violations it, uh, even you know the threat to their lives like some of them some of our leaders have actually been subject have actually been uh, victims of extrajudicial killings perpetrated by the state mm -hmm. we're finding that all over the world that human mm -hmm. rights uh, defenders are very vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let me just ask you about uh, something that we've heard a lot about here it's the uh, united nations declaration uh, of the rights of indigenous people and I'm just wondering, um, how useful is it uh, in asserting indigenous people's rights over access uh, and control of the resources and their ability to say no to exploration and development that would have negative impacts on, uh, on their land and, and way of life? Can you comment on that? Okay. So uh, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is actually a product of indigenous people's struggles all over the world, wanting, wanting their rights to be uh, recognized um, internationally. Uh, so um, we are really uh, very well, the Cordillera People's Alliance had been part of developing or coming up with um, you know, the, the declaration and we're happy that finally in September 13, uh, 2007, this was adopted by the United Nations. But of course, we're having problems with like uh, the big, uh, uh, the powerful uh, governments all over the world, which includes uh, the Canadian government has not uh, signed, yeah. has not uh, signed uh, the, the, the declaration. So actually the indigenous peoples, including uh, my, my organization is campaigning, com campaigning and uh, putting pressure in the governments of, of Canada, United Nations, um, Australia, New Zealand to sign, to sign, it, uh, to adopt the, to, uh, to sign the declaration. Well, in terms of how uh, the UN group is really um, um, advancing or like uh, uh, facilitating the recognition of our rights, well, uh, I can say that it's a document, it's an additional human rights uh, document or tool that indigenous peoples can use all over the world to advance and to uh, put forward their issues concerning, um, uh, yeah, concerning everything that, uh, that uh, uh, about indigenous peoples' rights. And um, it's, uh, so it's also very important that uh, uh, the, the UN group has to be like, uh, has to uh, be um, uh, used to as an uh, yeah as an educational tool among indigenous people so that they will be uh, they will be aware that there is such a uh, there is such a uh, declaration. On the other hand, even without the UN declaration, the rights of indigenous peoples. I think indigenous peoples have been asserting their rights for a long, long time. And uh, given that there is already one, there is the UN group, it is uh, like an additional uh, material to push uh, states, uh, corporations, governments to uh, respect, uh, to recognize the rights of indigenous peoples. And especially now that the, uh, well, the, the rich, uh, the powerful nations have become really more aggressive in looking into the natural resources uh, of 
uh, of the uh, of the world, which are mostly found in indigenous peoples, that uh, on indigenous lands. yeah, on indigenous lands, that uh, we use this uh, declaration to like uh, stop mm -hmm. <laughs> stop these uh, uh, incursions. Go ahead. Yeah, like I mean, we have the UN trip at the international level, but specific in the Philippines, actually. Uh, there is the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act mm -hmm. that is enacted by the Philippine government. And I'm wondering, uh, how is that, you know, uh, how is that useful in terms of uh, supporting and aiding, yeah, Indigenous peoples to assert their right and have a, yeah, the exercise ethic, you know, the free prior and informed mm -hmm. uh, consent uh, for mining companies or any kind of development you know, uh, mm -hmm. to, to enter their community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in the case of the Philippines, we have the, um, we have the uh, um, Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. But I would say that uh, my organization, the Cordillera Peoples' Alliance, has been very critical about, uh, about this for the reason that it, it has uh, many, uh, many loopholes. Mm -hmm. But one, th uh, one important provision that uh, we can actually use uh, in the, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act is the um, free prior and informed mm -hmm. consent. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, uh, talking about the free prior and informed consent, unfortunately, that uh, the government agency, uh, the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, which is supposed to uh, implement the you know, Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, has, mm -hmm. like, uh, has worked in complicity with the corporations so even violating uh, the free prior, uh, free prior and informed uh, consent provision. Mm -hmm. So there, ha uh, we have like uh, several cases of manipulation of how the National Commission of Indigenous Peoples, along with the mining companies, have really manipulated the provision of uh, free prior informed consent. So one of one of the things that they do, uh, they do very badly is to like organize fake or bogus uh, tribal leaders or organizations and uh, they make the agreement or they uh, they have these uh, bogus uh, tribal leaders or uh, tribal uh, indigenous peoples organizations to give them the free prior informed consent mm -hmm. but the truth is the, the communities or the, the real organizations are asserting the their uh, right to uh, land and natural resources have Oppose or are not willing to give their uh, consent, yes. their free prior informed consent to these corporate uh, interests. Mm -hmm. Do you find it contradictory? Like on one hand, we have the Mining Act of 1995 that allows you know kind of opens up the country for the exploration of mm -hmm. you know multinational companies, mm -hmm. right? And then you have the uh, Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, how do you how do you reconcile, or is it from the very beginning um, a contradiction? Mm -hmm. You know, on one hand, you want to protect the rights of the indigenous peoples to say yes or no uh, to the exploration of you know uh, their in their lands. And on the other hand, you have this act that allows any companies to apply for mining concessions in the Philippines. Yeah, it really is a very big uh, contradiction, although on the part of the state or the government, uh, they uh, use the lame reason that the mm -hmm. Philippine Mining Act was uh, set up two years before the, uh, oh, the uh, yeah, Act. before the enactment of the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. But in any case, um, but in any case, if it's a government or if a state sincere in protecting and upholding the rights of Indigenous peoples, then uh, it wouldn't matter whether the mining act, mm -hmm. the Philippine Mining Act, was in place before the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act mm -hmm. uh, uh, wa uh, was enacted. So it's really a very uh, big contradiction, and it really, um, you know, it really um, frustrates uh, Indigenous Peoples' organizations uh, uh, that uh, the Philippine government is using that uh, as a as a reason to answer uh, uh, whenever to answer our. Uh, our uh, questions whenever we challenge them that they should uh, already um, recognize or they should mm -hmm. um, yeah they should uh, look into the cause of indigenous peoples of repealing the Philippine Mining Act of uh, 2000 of 1995 mm -hmm. at the same time looking into how the you know uh, there had been la uh, like um, uh, recommendations from indigenous peoples like from the Cordillera Peoples Alliance of like um, 
looking into how uh, the Philippine government should uh, make the uh, not just limit the themselves in the indigenous on the existing indigenous people's rights act but like considering also uh, uh, recommendations arising from indigenous people's uh, um, organizations uh, especially with the um, with the more aggressive uh, operations of corporations mm -hmm. uh, in extracting the remaining resources of uh, indigenous peoples and uh, I think, well, well, aside that uh, there is uh, already the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the whole world is complaining and talking about climate crisis. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about climate crisis and other forms of crisis, we should learn our lessons from the indigenous peoples on how they have, on how we have uh, asserted our, defended our uh, land and uh, uh, natural uh, natural resources and this should these resources should not be uh, looked upon by the powerful nations powerful governments and corporations for their own profit that uh, they should uh, look at how indigenous peoples have sustainably used these resources as uh, I believe that we don't have another world to uh, there's no other world that uh, we will go the planet Earth is our only uh, only world, and even if we die, we still, yeah, we still need a land to uh, yeah. to settle our bodies. So, um, yeah, it's a message to not just for indigenous peoples, but um, to the people all over the world, especially to uh, the corporations and the powerful um, governments ruling the world, mm -hmm. that they should really learn from the indigenous peoples' uh, yeah. experiences. Um, I'm wondering if you can also kind of expound a bit on the work you're doing at the regional level. I understand that in a Buyog is a member or us actually doing the secretariat work for RIM, the, yeah. the regional, you know, uh, formation of women in mining. Yeah. So uh, uh, in a Buyog is also part of a, an international network of women in mining. So uh, specifically on the issue of mining, we're able to. Uh, brought our uh, part, uh, our issues on mining to that network and at the same time learn from how other women all over the world not necessarily indigenous peoples of how they are defending their um, land from the onslaught of mining corporations mm -hmm. uh, aside from the uh, international network of women in mining we also have like uh, we were able to um, be part of other women's networks of which we are able to um, bring the issues of indigenous uh, women, particularly on, on, on the issue of mining. So um, on the 13th to 16th of this, uh, of this month, we attended a, an international women's conference. And uh, uh, two of the very important uh, workshops of which we were part is the Women in Development Aggression uh, Workshop, which we were able to uh, uh, bring the the issues faced by indigenous women and other women, women sectors of women affected by mining. So that was like organized by Carus. Yes, we were in that workshop. <laughs> yes, and aside from that, uh, Ina Buyugu was also part of the workshop on the struggles of indigenous yes. women. So in that, uh, we uh, we got to we got to. Uh, uh, to see that you know it, it's not only us uh, the indigenous women and peoples of the Cordillera region in the Philippines who are experiencing the onslaught of mining corporations but also other women uh, women's organizations like in uh, Latin America mm -hmm. and uh, well uh, speaking about the, although this is not only on mining like you know the very indigenous peoples of Canada are also experiencing development aggression in the form of uh, like um, um, lagging operations <laughs> in their yeah. own and the uh, native countries mm -hmm. and uh, native territories. Mm -hmm. What would you uh, say are the positive steps of indigenous communities that you know? Uh, what would they look like? Mm -hmm. Any positive steps that? Uh, they aspire to yeah yeah well the fact that we are opposing the uh, the different forms of development aggression 
and uh, I'm happy to say that indigenous women are in the mm -hmm. forefront, line, in the forefront of opposing this development aggression. It's a very positive step. This is one way by, uh, this is a manifestation of indigenous women um, empowering themselves and empowering other women. Uh, um, uh, telling the wider community that they are not just, they are only uh, for the homes, but they are also very much involved in the struggle. And I, I believe that their, the indigenous women's involvement in, uh, in their community struggles is because indigenous women have a very, um, have a very, um, 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 how do you call it? Yes, and uh, yeah, holistic, holistic um, view on the land and how this relates very much to the lives of indigenous peoples. And because indigenous uh, women are also very much involved in the, in, in, um, in ensuring that their families and their communities will survive. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a very, it's an issue, it's a very important survival issue for indigenous women. That's why they are very much involved. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, aside from the local organizing, I think uh, it's very important also for indigenous women and peoples to like uh, bring these issues to the wider public, not just among indigenous peoples. So bring this to um, to lobby these issues to government, to uh, mm -hmm. to the local and national governments. At the same time, calling the attention of uh, like uh, groups outside of the country, especially in in the countries where uh, these companies are coming from. So it's very important th that the Canadian public at the same time. Um, um, legislators or parliamentarians from Canada and your government should also be aware about this, uh, these issues. So networking, advocacy at the wider level and uh, well, of course linking this issue, uh, this, uh, issues of indigenous peoples to other peoples and uh, women's uh, organizations and movements all over the world like the one that uh, was just uh, set up in Montreal um, um, from August 13 to 16, the International Women's uh, Alliance. So this uh, would be another uh, like uh, forum by which indigenous women's voices could be heard and brought to a wider uh, level. Okay. Yeah. Very helpful. Well, uh, especially since you know majority of the of the mining companies are registered here in Canada, mm -hmm. and in the Philippines, more than half of the companies have applied for mining concessions in the Philippines are Canadians. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to mention too that um, in Canada we have you know Bill C three hundred mm -hmm. that is going to be voted on I think as soon as the Parliament resumes in in September. But also to mention that the Cordillera the People's Alliance um, is and you know Buil is part of that is one of those international organizations have sent letters of support uh, addressed to the parliament supporting the passage of you know Bill C three hundred, mm -hmm. recognizing that it's not it will not resolve you know all issues that indigenous mm -hmm. communities and affected communities face, but I think it's a step forward in mm -hmm. penalizing you know companies, mining companies who are Right. Of course, Bill C three hundred is uh, Canadian proposed Canadian legislation that would uh, restrict Canadian support for Canadian mining companies that do not meet international minimal standards for mm -hmm. human rights uh, and environmental concerns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in your perspective, Bernie, is would that kind of effort help and support the, the resistance you know, you're waging in, in your country and specific countries against uh, you know, the intrusion of mining companies? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the reason why the Cordillera People's Alliance and uh, Inabuyuk has like, uh, uh, supported, uh, supported the, the, the calls of, uh, of Canadian organizations like Kairos uh, uh, to endorse the Bill C-300. And actually, uh, and, uh, well, yeah, like Connie, uh, like, uh, Connie mentioned, uh, of course, uh, we don't, uh, 
like we don't ex uh, we we don't uh, look at the bill C three hundred as like the the solution. <laughs> the, the solution but uh, <laughs> like what uh, Colin mentioned, it's a step uh, is is step for step uh, forward. Uh, yeah, actually, we also uh, presented that in our in the in the resolution that we had in the mm -hmm. workshop on women and uh, development yeah, aggression. So. Um, uh, of course, uh, yes, uh, we are we are happy. <laughs> well, I, uh, what's uh, important for me is uh, like uh, uh, we have uh, Canadian parliamentarians who um, who have uh, carried on that campaign mm -hmm. and uh, who are who more or less we are able to uh, work with in terms of the issue of mining and other forms of extractive uh, industry of which uh, Canadian uh, companies are involved. And just to let, well, you know, um, the Kairos uh, campaign for the fall is, uh, is titled This Land, Our Life, mm -hmm. uh, basically focusing on, you know, indigenous rights and gas and oil resource extraction. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, uh, the Cordillera People's Alliance and Inabuyog is also uh, uh, happy that Kairos has like uh, came out with this campaign, which is very much supportive of the current issues that Indigenous peoples and women are facing. Mm -hmm.